Alright, so we're under the oil pan. Under the oil pan. Under the engine. I already removed the oil pan. Um, like I say, it was 10 millimeter screws to take them off. Now, now that we're under here, this right here is the, the oil pickup tube. So, if I can hold this camera. Uh, this is a 10 millimeter. You got one here. And then you have two over here. There's one here and if one on the other side. And then this oil pickup will fall down. Also, you got what's called a windage tray. This tray prevents oil from splashing all up against the uh, um, the crank while it's spinning. So, you also have to remove the windage tray to get to the pistons. And those also look like 10 millimeter. I'm not for sure how many it is. Let me see if I can get up under there. Sorry about my hands, folks. Alright, so it looks like it's one, two, three, four. And if there's the same amount on the other side, it'd be four, five, six, seven. I got oil in my ear. Anyway, it looks like it's seven of them. So you take the three out of the uh the oil pickup too, and then seven out of the windows tray. And then you should be able to see two of the uh, connecting rods. But also, like I say, underneath here, there's a girdle that holds the, actually holds the, 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 the crank in place. So you take off the girdle, then you can see the rod. It holds it in place, but it's not the only thing holding the crank in place. So it's not going to fall or anything if you take off the girdle. But it helps support the crank. I should say it like that. It helps support it. So let me get this off and then you'll see how it looks next. Alright, so I got the oil pickup off and the windage tray. This big alum big bigger this big, uh, this big aluminum piece in the middle is the windage tray. I mean the windage tray. That's the girdle I was talking about. It helps support the the crank. So I'm gonna have to take that off to get to look like cylinder number two and three. So all it is is two, four, six screws. There's two in the back, two in the middle, two in the front. They look like they can be anywhere between a 14 and maybe, maybe a 14, 16 millimeter. I'm not sure. I haven't tried to take it off yet. But uh, the only thing left is to remove the windows tray. Why do the heck I keep saying windows tray? It's the girdle. Remove the girdle, and then we can start removing the pistons. Unscrewing. You can actually see the pistons. Um, let's see if I can point one out. This is one of the my finger at. Uh, boy, let's see. Sorry about this, guy. I'm trying to talk and record at the same time. This is one of the connecting rods right here. It's a connecting rod right there. And it's a connecting rod right here. And it's one right in the back over there. And it looked like they held on with just eyeballing it, possibly uh, maybe like a 14 millimeter, just eyeballing it. So, um, you might be able to, well, now it'd be hard. You can unloosen them with the girdle on, but when it comes down to removing the cap, it's going to hit up against it. Uh, you just make your life a little harder trying to do everything with the girdle on, so I will remove it. You know, you'll have a whole lot more room to work with. So that's next. Remove the girdle and then start taking apart uh, the connected rod so you can push the piston up through the top where you took the head off. Um... Something else I was going to say, I can't quite remember, but I drew a blank. But yeah, I get back. Right after I take off this girdle, we can start taking off the connecting rods, pushing the pistons to the top, and see what damage I did on which piston and how bad severe it is. So uh, stay tuned and uh, please be patient with me. It's actually my first time ever doing that. So keep this, keep in mind, the engine is still in the car. You do not have to remove the engine to do this, which is a good thing. So uh, hope all is well, and we'll continue shortly. So we took the rod caps off of cylinder one and four, because those two 
pistons ride together as you can see two and three ride together now after taking out the pistons um i do see the damage that i've done on two those two uh pistons the rods look fine the piston the one that has the damage and another thing cylinder number one rod cap came off easy with me just wiggling it back and forth cylinder number four the rod cap was a pain i eventually got it off what i did i used a flat tip screwdriver and um i can kind of show you <clears throat> i don't know if it was the right thing to do or not but i don't plan on using these rods anyway so it doesn't matter i just put it on the gap between the actual rod and the rod cap and i was tapping it with a uh a hammer until that gap opened on one end then i go on the other end hammer it to it open and eventually it came loose and came off cylinder number one i didn't have to do that i just wiggled it now check this out this is i labeled them uh you can't see it because it's dirty but this is cylinder number one let me turn some light on I don't know if that's good enough or not, but I'm getting some sunlight. Can you guys see that? Alright, that's a lot better. Now, come on camera focus. You see that? Right below that first um, compression ring, there's a crack right in the center. It's a crack right there. You see that crack to the right of it? right under the second um, compression ring it's a crack right there and what do you know there's two cracks top and bottom right there and this is why my car has so much blow by this is why my car has so much blow by so far we counted two that's four two more to the left of the screen that's four. So far, that's four cracks on one piston. And it's all on uh, the ring land. So the weak link of this engine was the actual piston. That's the typical NA Honda piston. There's guys that do get away with turbo in their cars, and they last for years. Unfortunately, I wasn't one of them. So that's piston number one. And we counted four cracks. So let's see, piston number four. Let's go around. Let's see, go around. Those are just scratches. Scratch. Uh, I don't see anything yet. Okay, there we go. Okay, so this one, that's the actual crack. See that? That's a crack. Uh, right up under There we go right up under the first compression ring. There's a crack You go to the right There's another one right up under That first compression ring right in the center So we counted two on piston number One I'm sorry if I said that first piston I showed you was cylinder number one that was number four number four is the worst um, we count it. All right, so we about to hone it. Honing just me roughing up the cylinder a little bit, as you can see. I already did these three, but I saved this one for recording. If you look in here, you see how rough it look compared to how shiny that one looks. So we gotta get this one like that one. And what we're gonna use is a called a honing tool. Use this, put it in the drill, and what we go do, we go spin it one way for a little bit, and then we go reverse it and make it spin the opposite way for a little bit. So let's go that ahead. looks like a tool they use at the OB right gym. Yep, that's where I borrowed it from. Oh, no wonder. Yeah. Whatever works, right? I guess. So, I'm sorry. First, you want to do is get some oil and uh, rub it all around the cylinder. I already did it, but. So lube it. Yeah, you want to lube it. Rub it all in there, and then you take this, just stick it in there. Go uh, slow speed, not like super fast, but just let it do its thing. You don't have to 
go all the way down and you hit the crank. Push the push the ring and don't go all the way down. It stops on the hat and goes to a hand from the bottom. So do it like that a couple of times. And then reverse it the opposite way. That click is here is going to be the crank. Try not to do that. in there see how rough it look now that's how you want it you want it to get that rough texture to it so I believe I'm done um, I'm gonna leave it like that because you don't want to take too much off of it this one looks real good uh, like I said you don't want to take too much off and uh, there's no way for me to measure how much I just took off so Basically, you just roughing it up. When you rough it up, you do take some metal off, but it's not to the point where I'm boring it and actually taking big amounts off. So, just rough it up a little bit. Once you see the shininess is gone, you pretty much good. Just stop right there. But that's how you hone the cylinders. And the reason you do that, so when you put new rings on it, that has something to seek to. Uh, rings gotta be broken in. And if you leave this the way it was, all glazed and shiny, the rings have a hard time um, seating, seating or breaking in. Simple word, you know, simple turn, break in. So um, make sure you do that before you install your new pistons with the new rings. And uh, that's how you hone this bad boy. Next step is compressing the ring and actually putting the pistons down into the, the bore, the cylinder bore. So uh, I'll show you that next.